What's good, y'all? What's the numbers TV? It's your boy, Poe Rowe. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And like a video if you appreciate the content that Poe Rowe and What's the Numbers I provided. Today, we'll be back with another profile piece. This one is on the Harlem Hammer. In this video, we'll take a look at his early life growing up in Harlem, New York, where eventually he will find boxing as a way to help control his quick temper. Then, we will talk about his time as a professional and some of his triumphs in the sport before the day in the ring that will change his life forever. And lastly, we will take a look at the details surrounding the situation that currently has him serving 29 years in prison. James Butler, aka the Harlem Hammer, is from Harlem, New York, and grew up in one of the many housing projects that are spread across the five boroughs. Raised by his mother, who often left him and his brother alone to fend for themselves while she was all partying, James would be quiet and withdrawn as a child, and with his father not around, would eventually spend some time in foster care and jail before getting into boxing. Once James started boxing, he quickly became a rising talent but was also known to be short-tempered, often snapping at other boxers training in the gym. He would go on to win the city's most coveted amateur boxing title, the Golden Gloves, in 1992 and 1995 before turning pro. He would go by the nickname the Harlem Hammer because he packed a nice punch and won 18 of his first 19 professional fights before winning the United States Boxing Association Super Middleweight title in 1999. That hot start to his pro career would put the Harlem Hammer in position to fight for the International Boxing Federation title in 2001. Butler would end up losing the fight by unanimous decision, but would still keep a top 10 ranking in the super middleweight division headed into his next fight. Now, Butler's next bout earned him infamy on November 23, 2001 at the Roseland Ballroom in New York City. The bout was a charity event to benefit surviving New York firemen and police officers of the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks in New York City and was televised live on ESPN2. Butler faced Richard the Alien Grant, a fighter who had beaten him early in his career. After losing the rematch by unanimous decision, Butler had his gloves removed before the announcement of the winner. Grant then went to Butler's side of the ring for an expected exchange of congratulations. Instead, Butler sucker punched Grant, hitting him with a right hook to his jaw. Grant suffered a temporary dislocated jaw and a lacerated tongue that required 26 stitches. Butler was arrested and charged with second degree assault. He was later convicted for the crime and served four months at Rikers Island Detention Facility. Once released from jail, his weight would balloon to over 250 pounds as a reaction to the medication he was put on after he was diagnosed as being bipolar. The Hall of Hammer would be at a crossroads in his boxing career, but eventually committed himself to getting back in boxing shape and setting all the SX weight. But to do so, he would have to cut back and stop taking his bipolar meds as he felt he left him as a shell of his former self in the ring. His record was 2-2 two in two and 4 fights after the sucker punch fiasco, with his last fight being a loss to Omar Sheikah in August of 2004. Next, the Harlem Hammer, whose record was now 20 wins with 5 losses, would find himself on the outside looking in, being used as just a spawn partner for up-and-coming fighters earning $100 a day. Not happy, he would relocate to Vero Beach, Florida to work with his new trainer, Buddy McGirt. While there, James would meet a woman who he would start living with and eventually have a baby by. The woman would later say that Butler, his box of income all but gone, and his reputation in shambles, would often erupt into frightening fits of anger. Butler feeling alone and unwanted, turned to the one friend who had been there for him through thick and thin, Sam Kellerman, the younger brother of Max Kellerman, a sports talk show host who is now an analyst for almost every boxing event that takes place. Butler had been introduced to Sam almost a decade earlier by their mutual trainer Alexander Newbo, who believed it was beneficial for his fighters to socialize outside of the gym. Sam Kellerman, who was a Columbia graduate and came from an affluent family, was in the boxing gym training to toughen up a bit when him and Butler, the menacing pro, clicked a bit and formed the bond after being introduced. Now fast forward to 2004, Sam's living in Hollywood, California and agrees to let the Harlem Hammer come stay with him for a few days. But the day stretches to weeks with Butler showing no intention to move out. That's when Kellerman told his now not so close friend that he would have him evicted if he did not leave voluntarily. What happened next was on October 17, 2004, Sam Kellerman was found dead on the floor of his blood spattered apartment. His body had been there for several days, the authorities said, and there was evidence of arson. The murder weapon, a bloody hammer, was found at the scene. Sam was just 29 years old at the time of his death. Three days after Kellerman's body was discovered, Butler turned himself into the police. He pleaded not guilty to the murder in Austin, but later pleaded guilty to voluntary manslaughter in Austin and was sentenced to 29 years and four months in prison, which is where he is today. But yo, it's What's the Numbers TV is a quick profile piece on James the Harlem Hammer Butler. Now, I actually got this idea. Somebody in the comments left, like, do, do this piece. And it actually clicked when he said it because, you know, I'm a boxing fan, so I've seen a lot of different boxing. I remember once when I was watching, I don't know if it was ESPN or a different cable or whatever. 
And I seen the, the, the video of um, the Harlem Hammer knocking dude out after the fight. I'm like, damn, boy, knocked him out. The fight was over. It was crazy, you know what I'm saying, for a benefit fight and all. It was like a 9-11 benefit event. And he went crazy. Got locked up. It was a big commotion in the ring. So if you left that comment, man, here, you got one for free, man. You ain't have, have to hit the cash up or nothing. That was a good one. I knocked it out because it actually clicked in my head when you mentioned it. But, you know, his um, the person he killed was Sam Kellerman, which is Max Kellerman's brother. You might know who Max is. He still does all the boxing events for the most part. So rest in peace to Sam Kellerman, his little brother. Now, I ain't going to ramble too much on that. You know, um, the Hall of Hammer, he's doing 29 years and four months. He's still locked up right now. So that's where that case is at and that story is. But shout out to y'all, man. We finally hit 40K subscribers on YouTube. I want to thank every one of y'all. If you're not subscribed yet, subscribe up. We're trying to hit that 50K now. So help us do that as Poe Rose. What's the numbers? You know, we do it for the streets. So holler at me if you got any business. The email's up there. Follow the Instagram, the merch, all that good stuff. Also, and lately, I've been going live. So I don't know if y'all seen it, if y'all caught any one of them. But if y'all, you know, be on the lookout. Sometimes you might catch me going live, riding through the streets, doing this, doing that. So, you know what I'm saying? If you ever see me live, pull up. Let me know where you is, where you from. You know what I'm saying? We chop it up. But, yeah, shout out to y'all. It's What's the Numbers TV. We have 40K subs. And it's your boy, Paul Rowe, man. We back before you know it. We out of here. Peace.